Hi guys, Steve Stanton up here in Northern Kentucky. Uh, I want to do a video, more of an educational video uh, today. I had four people this week message me uh, on Messenger on Facebook, ask me what should they do? Should they start out flipping or should they start out renting? And what would it take? So sometimes I throw this stuff in there when I'm doing my little funny videos or showing about my house or something. But tonight I'm gonna just talk about just a few things that are very important. I have a lot of people say to me, I wouldn't help anybody, but who cares? I mean, there's enough money in so many houses in the world, there's plenty to go around. And this is not a political post. Uh, I wanna get that out first, but I'll be honest with you, man. The president we have in there, the last three years have been so good, so good, you know? And I believe he'll be there for this year plus another four, so five more years. This guy's never going to let the economy go down while he's there. It's just not, we're not going to go in recession for the next five years. That's a guarantee. I'll, I'll guarantee that I'll bet money on that. He's not going to have that on his resume that when he was president that we went in recession. Now, when he's gone, things always go up, but they're going to have to come down eventually. They do that just to clean things up, and it just happens. So anyway, with that being said, be glad that we're, we're living good right now because we're living good. So, number one, you know, capital. Do you know what capital is? It's money. You know, you have to have money. I mean, like I said, I started three and a half years ago. I only had $20,000, not a lot of money, and I had to watch everything I was doing uh, because even though you get a bank, you, can get, you have to do draws. So, you have to do the work with your own money. They come and inspect it and look at it, and then you get draws. So... You have to have capital up front to pay for everything, supplies, help, you know, insurances. When you buy these houses, they want you to have them insured. If they're in a flood zone, you have to have extra insurance, flood zone insurance. There's just so many things that go into it. You really need work insurance, you know, workman's comp. You need uh, liability insurance. You need all kinds of things. A lot, a lot, that happened last time. A lot of things you need, you have to have. So uh, we'll go back to all that again. I'm gonna try to make this not a real long, boring video. Number two, you really need a good realtor or a wholesaler. Why? You definitely need to find these houses at a good price because if you can save on the front end, it leaves you more money in the back end. Because you have, and I'll be honest with you, you, you really need to start flipping if you're just getting into this because you're not gonna have the capital to do this to, to, to hold all that money. I mean, it took me a few years to get built up where I, I don't sell anything now. I just, I keep everything. But I still have tons of money tied up in the front of these houses that I won't see for 15 years. But once they're paid off, all my stuff's on 15 years. You can do 15, 20, 30 year loans. I do 15 because I'm already getting older now and I'd like to try to enjoy some of my life when I get older. So, you know, you need a good realtor wholesaler that's gonna help you and work with you you need to find a good, honest one. There's tons of realtors everywhere. I mean, you'll just have to go through some. You know, I'm pretty lucky. I have a good realtor. It's always been with me. I've bought probably 130 or 40 houses from this guy, and uh, he's always been good, you know, good to me and done anything. Here, here's the problem I see with realtors. Ring, ring, voicemail, leave a message. You can never hear from them. That's a lot of realtors. That's the difference. My, my realtor, I call. If he don't answer, he sends a text, I will call you right back. He's never not called me back. That pisses me off when someone doesn't call me back. You know, I'm trying to spend money. They're too busy, you know, and uh, you want to get a realtor, don't care to get a little bit dirty. You, you know, when you walk up the house, I'm like, ooh, this smells, or oh, I'm not going in there. No, oh, really? I, I mean, you know, I want them to smell like shit, you know, and, and, and rough and dirty because I'm going to get a better deal on these houses. That's where I'm going to make my money. You don't want to buy one that somebody's already halfway flipped and, and put lipstick on a pig and they're going to get extra money out of it. You want one that's just raw, you know, out of date, rough, holes in the wall, floors bucked a little bit. Hell, I like them with foundation problems. I get them real cheap then. My guys can fix anything. All right, number three, help. That's what I was talking about. Help is the biggest thing I see where people go under is they don't have help. If you don't have good help, you're going to lose. I mean, yeah, I can do all the work myself. Well, you can't do everything. And if you can, good for you. It's going to take you a long time. You know, you're probably going to have to have some roofers, foundation guys, 
bricklayers, concrete guys, you know, carpenters, drywall. It took me, I bet I fired 60 people in the last three and a half years to get the crew I have. And I have other guys on standby when I need them and stuff, you know. And uh, you got to be out there and oversee this stuff and make sure. And, and buy material. Get a place where you can buy material at a really good deal. You know, at Home Depot is where I buy everything. I won't lie. I bought everything from them. But in Florence, Home Depot, I'm their number one small guy. There's a company bigger than me. But as far as an individual contractor, I am Florence's number one buyer. That's a fact. So, but uh, that's important. And then number four, you do got to have some balls. I kid around with kahunas and stuff like that. You just got to have nerve. I mean, you can't be scared to go in debt. You know, if you don't ever owe anything, how are you ever going to have anything? If you just sat idle and you're just happy with life and you just rent your home and, and you're just good and you never do anything, how are you ever going to have anything? Yes, the debt's scary. I'm in debt millions and millions and millions of dollars, but so what? I mean, what's the worst can happen? I lose it. Big deal. I'll just start over again, you know? But if you're smart with your money and you stay on top of your rentals and you take care of them as soon as they're empty and you clean them up and get them right back rented, you're never going to have an issue, but we're not talking about rentals. Uh, number five, when you buy these houses, always think of the area they're in. Like, it's important. Like, you can buy a house and have a couple turds on each side and you make your house so nice and pretty and it's beautiful you done great work and then they walk up and it's like oh gosh look at this and on the other side and in the backyard there's trash everywhere from the people behind you or there, there's a dump across the street you know uh, uh, can you always have everything perfect no but you need to take that in consideration if you can get that house at a very good deal and you don't have to put a lot of money into it and you can not make so much money up front you know, you can't, don't try to hit the home run on every one of them. You know, you, you make your quick money, you make money, and you move on. Just remember, you're going to pay taxes on that capital gains, you know, on flipping houses. But but the ideal is to find one that's got nice houses all around it. That's not always going to happen, for sure. You, uh, in school districts, you, you know, you think about when you're flipping these houses, where's the school? What school is people going to go to? You know, the kids, parents move in, they want their kids to be in good schools. They want good areas. You know, they want their kids to be able to go outside and play. And always buy, if you're going to flip, three-bedroom houses. You know, two baths are great. One and a half, one's tough when you're trying to flip. You got three three bedrooms and people are moving in and they got all these kids and stuff and, and they got one bathroom. That's tough. Think about it. Do you like just one bathroom? So, But the good thing about these houses, when you buy them, you can always add bedrooms or you can add bathrooms there might be a room that's just like an odd room that you can build a closet in if it's got a window in it it's a bedroom you know it can be considered an actual bedroom and there's always spots in houses that you can add a bathroom bathrooms are easy you know if you have one that has a nice tub shower you can always do a stand-up shower you know a sink and a toilet you have a full bath so you have two baths you know and, and in these four and five bedroom houses they don't really bring a whole lot more and, and again you want to try the. You have bubbles like you know your hundred thousand dollar homes and one fifty and things like that. The bubble's big. What does he mean by bubble? That means there's a lot of people can afford to buy those houses. Then when you start getting over two hundred, then gosh, you get up into three hundred and you get up into the you know the half a million and man's the bubble so tight. I mean it's just a little tiny circle. Not many people can afford to buy those. So you want to try to stay away from those. I mean yeah, it's cool to flip big houses, I've done big this and I've done that, yeah. I, you know, I've done that one time. I had three big homes. I had a big, you know, historical house in Newport, a big house in Fort Thomas, and another big one in Bellevue. It almost broke me. I'm not going to lie. I thought I was scared I was done. I moved into one in Fort Thomas just to save me. It saved me. And the one in uh, Newport, historical, was beautiful. Prettiest home. My realtor's going to watch this. He knows. It was just beautiful. So was the one in Fort Thomas. I had to cut my price way down. I, I, you know, I was planning on, I wanted to make 75 to 100 grand on the one. I thought, I'm going to make, oh, shit. You know, 25, 30,000 bucks, but I got rid of it and moved on after it sat for four or five months, and I paid all that interest and payments on it and interest on it and everything. You know, you just got to think, man, and, and you got to think about what these houses are going to bring, and you got to look at the comps. What's comps? Comps is what are things selling within just a mile or two around the house that you just bought. That's important. You know, if you, you know, you buy a house and you stick a bunch of money and you're asking $130,000 and all the houses around you only selling for a hundred, guess what? You're going to get about a hundred grand out of your house. That's just what's going to happen. So, 
uh, those are just a few things. I mean, follow me, you know, Steve Stanton on my YouTube channel. I mean, I do have a Facebook, Steve Stanton. Uh, I hope this answers some of your questions. I'm already at 10 minutes now. It's a long video. But, you know, number one, capital money. Two, a good realtor wholesaler. Three, you need really good help. Four, you just got to have nerve not to be scared to do something. You know, you only have one life. Number five, I always think about the areas it's in, you know, schools, you know, what things are selling for, comps and things like that, you know, and uh, and be careful what you put in these houses. You know, you can, again, you, you put so much money in it and you just overdo it. You've overdone it. You're not going to get your money back out of it. You have to thank the area you're in, you know, and that's important. So, all right, guys, I just want to do a little video, a little more of a little educational video. I hope this helps you. I mean, you can always email me. It's sstantonhomes at gmail.com, and I'll try to answer your questions. Definitely not a jealous person. You know, I want everybody to live good and do good, and I hope you do. Thanks. See ya.